Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Roblox, and you all know my co-host, Justin. My birth certificate says I'm in my 20s, but my knees are saying I'm in my 70s, bird. And uncle, yes, I am into weird stuff, Ken. This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your source for all the parts and gear you and your Harley need. Today, we are talking about biker etiquette. And do these rules still apply? What's going on, guys? That That's the most accurate nickname I've ever had. Well, yeah. dude, every time you, like, bend your knee, it sounds like someone's walking on, like, a bunch of cellophane paper and those little... Uh, the bubble wrap. Bubble wrap, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, damn. And I, I know for a fact I have pretty bad arthritis in my knees, and my, my shit doesn't sound anything Nothing like that. Nothing like that. So, I, f- I feel for you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's what 13 years of dirt bikes will do to you. <laughs> and now you're <laughs> and going now doing back. And now you're going back, yeah. yeah. Which is funny because, like, my knees haven't bothered me, like, at all. Just your ribs lately? My ribs have been really. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's funny because, like, the injury to my ribs actually, the actual rib portion wasn't that bad. Like, they're still bruised, like, kind of tend to the touch. But it, like, did something to a muscle back on the back side of the rib. Yeah. Like, I, I still, to this day, have a yellow bruised line. Oh. Like, you can perfectly see the rib in yellow. Ooh, that's it's awesome. super that's... gross. Okay, so after this episode, we're going to have to see that. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Definitely. <laughs> so, you know, on this podcast, we we try to bring important information to our listeners or our audience. And things like motorcycle safety ways that they can you know fix their bikes how to ride in a group you know where uncle ken has masturbated at the og's houses <laughs> all of these very important details yeah so when we bring up biker etiquette we think of the standard definition the customary code of polite behavior in society or among members of a particular profession or group however what does that look like in the biker community it sounds fucking stupid so i hope it looks better than it sounds well no it, it yeah <laughs> is that just the definition of yeah etiquette? that's the definition of etiquette because polite and biker do not go hand in hand i mean i'm, I'm polite it sounds like a shitty valedictorian speech like, <laughs> <laughs> the webster's definition yeah. of etiquette <laughs> so when i was doing the research for this episode and honestly, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do this as a podcast or if I wanted to do this as a blog post. However, I found this website and it's the Pekin, Pekin, P-E-K-I-N insurance company. They have a blog site and I, I've heard all or part of these 10 rules that we should follow. And, and I don't know, I've, I've heard a part of this, but I've only heard these rules from older riders. So seasoned riders, AKA boomers. And <laughs> I'm not saying that this is an exhaustive list, but I think that these 10, I feel every biker who's been riding for some time has heard these or heard something similar to these. So what I want to do is read off each rule and then we discuss, you know, is this still legit or is it complete bullshit? And it was probably never actually legit, mm. but people just said that this is what they do. So I know it's not exhaustive. And right. if any of our audience feels like we've missed something or they want us to know about something leave in the comment section of the youtube video for this episode and it may be included in an updated etiquette uh episode later on or not or not yeah Yeah. you might just have the comment out there and we make fun of you (laughs) aka connor and (laughs) so let's go ahead and start off number one and these don't go in any specific order or anything like that but number one obey the rules of the road when you're on a bike you are represent you are a representative of every other biker whether or not it's right other drivers don't differentiate one biker from another 
when you weave in and out of traffic, cut off a driver, or cut to the front of the line at a toll booth, you make every other biker look bad. Justin, what are your thoughts about this? Oh, man. So I'm kind of in the middle on this one because, I mean, if you've seen my video, we, we do some dumb stuff. But, I mean, we're definitely not you know, the the safest riders out there. I'd say we were like 90% safe. I mean, we're, we're pretty safe. Yeah. yeah. But um, we don't do anything that we can't handle. True. We ride within our limits. And kind of one thing I put in my notes here is when we do things that are, are dumb or, you know, outside the quote unquote law, it's always out in the middle of nowhere. Right. It's always on country roads. So Generally, yeah. If you're going to be stupid, go somewhere where people are not going to see it or people could possibly be affected by it if something goes wrong. Yeah. Like, don't let your dumb decisions have the potential to ruin someone else's day. Yeah. But on the other hand, I think that you're always representative of a whole group, no matter what the situation is. Like, if you've got tattoos or... You know, that's basically what racism is. One person representing an entire race does something bad and people are like, oh, all all Mexicans steal. You know, that's obviously not the case. But at the same time, people are going to always have their opinions and they're usually going to be wrong. So fuck them. Hey, okay. I'm kidding. I mean, opinions are are like assholes. Yeah. Everyone has one. No one wants to see yours unless it's unless you're hot. No, yeah. no, I don't think that's how that works. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, it's in the it's in the Webster's dictionary. Ah, okay, oh, yeah. okay. You know, I mean, I can kind of agree with this, but at the same time, you know, I, I kind of disagree with it. I, I've always hated the adage of you know one person shits everyone wears diapers type of thing, just because there's you know bad drivers, riders, whatever out there doesn't mean that they're all like that you know stereo the stereotypes yes they exist for a reason but a lot of times they're just they're not accurate anymore right they're you funny know? but it's not a all-inclusive thing like, yeah granted 95 percent of bmw drivers don't use their blinkers but they still put blinkers on bmws yeah some people use them they do it, yeah it, and there's always oh that it's 5%. not a percent it's yeah. not an option when you buy your car, it's probably an upgrade. Knowing well, it has BMW to, has but, to be, yeah. But uh, but no, I mean, I've never, I've never liked the idea of like, you know, bikers do this, you know, or people who hunt are all like this, or you know, if people you're from who Texas, own guns, all do this. Yeah, I, I've never, I've never bought into that because I just know it's not true. Yeah, uh, I think the the one stereotype that holds pretty true is black guys and fat white girls sorry oh yeah that one is true as shit and it makes me so happy when i see it in person so that that's another one but the fact that all texans feel not think they feel that texas is the best state native texans period exactly okay yeah 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 Yeah. got it gotta put that on there yeah have you gotten your native Texan bumper sticker yet? Uh, I have one. I don't have it on anything. Uh, my dad has about seven. Of course he does. That yep. does not surprise me <laughs> he, at all. He has one on each of his beer fridges. <laughs> <laughs> and is half of it a Confederate flag and the other half a Texas flag? Dude, I'm not even lying. I think one actually <laughs> might be. I would have to check. He's definitely got a native Texan and a Confederate flag on the same beer fridge. I don't know if they're part of the same sticker, though. Oh. <laughs> so for me on this one, I'm going to say this is complete bullshit because the same logic would apply to all Jeep owners or yeah. all people who drive trucks or who shave their heads. Does it mean that every bald man represents skinheads? Hell yes. no. Oh. So if the non-riding public decides because some chick on a bike is riding wheelies on the highway, then all other riders must be the same hooligans, then they need to learn how to be more millennial. Okay, I know, I know. Here's the thing. I sometimes feel that this type of rule is geared towards boomers who are more likely to judge an entire group based on the individual. I can see that. The whole guilty by association thing. For this, I feel millennial and younger people are a lot better about not associating one 
for the many. I don't judge all Arabs based on the actions of the 9-11 attackers. Oh, yeah. So well, it was the government, so. Well, we all know that, but. Okay. just want to make sure that we were but on the same page there. Yeah. The, the whole or you're not going to judge other white guys because we shoot up places. Exactly. I don't know yeah. why I said we. That made it seem a little bit too real. I mean, <laughs> we're all white guys, I'm, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's I true. Mean, yeah. Well, Ken's not from the waist down. <laughs> yeah, he's machine from the waist <laughs> down. <laughs> so okay, so rule number two: obey the rules of the road with other bikers. Most traffic laws are intended to keep people safe, so when you pass another biker, use a separate lane. Passing in the same lane puts both you and the other biker in a potentially dangerous situation. One caveat is that if you are on a busy road and there is room for another bike or another biker to safely pass you within your lane, you can wave them through. Uncle Ken. Yeah. Okay. 100% agree with that. I've had people on bikes that I would just, I'm out riding by myself Mm -hmm. and they'll pass me in my lane. And that just irks me to fucking know. And it's just like a car fucking doing it. Yep. It pisses me off to no end because I don't fucking know you're going to pass me unless you've given me some sort of indication that you want by. And if you do, I'm going to let you buy. Yeah. You know, I'll move over fully to one side and give you all the room you, you need. But I mean, I use, when I ride, I use my whole lane. Yeah, I typically ride in one track, mm-hmm. but I use my whole lane for whatever fucking reason yeah. I want. Our tax dollars go to pay for the entire road. Yeah. So, <laughs> damn it to hell, I want to use every part of my lane. Oh, yeah. Because I'm paying for it. Yeah. No. It, it, <laughs> it, yeah, that just that's one thing that just irks me to fucking no end. Yeah. All right. Bird? Agree. 100%. Um, never pass a bike in the same lane. That's why anytime we have group rides, I'm saying if if you're a slow rider and you want to get to the back or if you're a faster rider, make sure that person in front of you or that person behind you knows that you know each other are there. Yeah. A little wave or a little hand signal. Flash me your lights. Exactly. Yeah. Something. It's got to be some sort of communication between both riders. Because like you said, if someone goes to pass you, say if they're going to pass you like 100 miles an hour and all of a sudden you swerve to miss something in the road. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dead. Like a dead animal or something. I mean, like I don't, yeah. I don't run over anything in the road no if i don't know it's not road yep <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean like i don't i don't hit cans i don't hit little rocks if i see you know if they're big enough for me to see i don't run them over yeah yep so i i, I think all three of us are in agreement on this one number three well on, should we keep track of the which ones we think are true and which ones are bullshit right now we're one and one so. yeah yeah one and one mm-hmm. okay number three obey the bikers rules of the road beyond the general traffic rules there are unwritten rules bikers follow with one another one of the most important is to check on other riders if you see them stopped on the roadside it could be they just need a break it could also be that they are out of gas had a flat or they're having engine trouble in any case what goes around comes around and you'll be glad to have the help when it's you stuck on the side of a lonely highway. (laughs) Wow. Justin. Wow. Uh, This one reeks of boomerism. (laughs) I would say 30, 40 years ago, this one would definitely be a, uh, a, a, a bigger rule, a bigger etiquette. But nowadays it's, it's starting to get to the point where this is one of those, you know, it's kind of going out of, there's no need for it anymore because everyone's going to have a cell phone. I mean, at least an Obama phone. And unless you're in an area where there's wait, no wait, cell wait, wait, service. Wait. Obama phone? Yeah. yeah. You, you don't know what an Obama phone is? No clue. What Are that. you Holy fucking serious? Holy shit, dude. You can tell he lives in a gated community. Wow. <laughs> Holy fuck. I have no clue what you guys are talking Obama about. Obama made cell phones available to everyone. Yeah. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Like, it didn't matter how much you made. You can go get a fucking Obama phone with, you know, X amount of minutes yep. per month so that you could, you know, it's so you could get a job and stuff like that. So they call you back for an interview and whatever. And that's definitely what they were used for. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not, mm-hmm. not for the plug. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's usually I'll check with a thumbs up more mm-hmm. times than not. Like you said, they're just taking a break. They'll give you a thumbs up and wave you by. It also depends on like what I have on me. Like, for example, I, I actually turned around because I saw two bikers pull off on the side of the road when I was coming back from riding dirt bikes and I had my tool bag with me. 
and they were both on Harley tours, and they were looking down at the the shifter peg. I was like, oh shit, I bet you their shifter peg fell off. So I had, I knew I had the tools to fix it. So I turned around to go check on them, and they they were already gone by the time I got there. But mm. I could have helped more than a cell phone or a roadside assistance type thing. But uh, I kind of stole Ken's saying, but I'll I'm sure he's going to bring it up in his if he does, and I'll bring it up. Okay, Uncle Ken. So so for <laughs> me, it, it's really kind of fifty fifty. It just depends on my situation at the moment. Uh, I guess it was, it was last year. There was a guy that he was stopped on the side of freaking 151 in rush hour traffic. And for whatever reason, you know, I just, uh, shit, I'll stop. And he was out of gas. Mm. So I, you know, went to the, I, had, I actually went to Lowe's and bought a five gallon gas can, filled it up and brought it back to him. Uh, and the only, the main reason I stopped is he actually had his helmet yep. behind his bike. Like you're supposed to. Yeah. Okay. Cause that's, that's like the international sign of distress, right? Yep. Yeah. It's kind of like your hood up. Yeah. That, that's, that's your hood up on your motorcycle. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I stopped for him, but you know, most of the time, like everyone's got cell phones now. Mm-hmm. I mean, in, in the city, you, help is right there, mm-hmm. you know, especially if you've got a cell phone. And uh, I mean, on the highway, I mean, we would it would have to be like on a on a backcountry road. It'd have to be like out in Big Bend or something. Yeah, out, out or, nowhere or Lakey, where the Twisted Sisters are, because most of the time you don't have a cell phone That's signal true. out yeah. there. And there's only what two gas stations yeah, in like something. a fifty or sixty mile radius, something like that. So really, that's I mean, I don't fucking trust people to begin with. Mm-hmm. So I don't feel like putting myself in that situation. If I can, I'll slow down, give them a thumb, you know, see if they'll do the thumbs up or whatever. Uh, and most of the time, people just give me a thumbs up, and you know, I roll on. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, I it really just depends on the situation. If I'm by myself. Uh, I'm more likely to stop if I'm by myself than if I have my wife and kids. Right. You know, because, right. you know, you, I mean, it's a fucking crazy world. Yeah. And you never know what can happen. Yeah. For this one, I'm hesitant to say yes. And I'm a full supporter of the Second Amendment, and I utilize the rights afforded me by the Constitution. So I am okay pulling over to help. However, I am more likely to pull over if I'm in my truck than if I'm on my bike. Yeah. And with the truck, I could give them a lift to a gas station or somewhere where they can make arrangements to be picked up. On the bike, it really depends on the situation. Again, since I utilize the Second Amendment, my fear factor is somewhat lower than those that are not utilizers of the Second Amendment. And before we continue, Sir Jeffrey, challenge completed, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, the saying that Ken didn't say was, when you pull up to a biker, is there anything that I can do to help that is not already on the way? Right. Yeah. I mean. Because chances are by the time you got there, texts have already been made, calls have already been made. Yeah. And I mean, and I don't carry a toolkit with me on a regular basis. So, I mean, if you don't have a phone, I could make a phone call for you. That's about it. Yep. But most everyone has a phone. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Rule number four. Don't skip the wave unless you have to. The motorcycle wave is synonymous with riding. It's an acknowledgement of the famil- familial, 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 familial ties among riders, but it isn't always appropriate. Safety and control of your bike always come first, and other riders should understand if you aren't in a position to take a hand off the controls. Uncle Ken, fuck waving. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you know, at first I thought, you know, when I first like got into riding, I, I thought, yeah, you got to fucking wave to everyone. You know, it's a thing to do. It's like having a fucking Jeep. <laughs> no, I, I quickly got tired of that. Yep. Look, I'm doing my own thing. I'm riding my own, own ride. You yeah. know, if you wave to me, I'll, I'll generally wave back. But sure. I, I just, I don't initiate the wave. I, j- I just don't. I, I got better things to do than, than worry about you. And your feelings. <laughs> and that's generally what it comes down to. Yeah. Oh, he didn't wave because he's on a Harley or he didn't wave because he's on a sport bike or whatever reason he didn't wave. I don't, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Fuck your feelings. <laughs> and there's so many people out there that just, it just gets under their skin so deep that you didn't wave. Oh, it's, it's their, it's what they thrive off of. Yes. Yeah. 
and it, 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 it fuck your feelings i don't care yep <laughs> i have to i have to take shade trees uh point on this one if y'all haven't seen his uh biker weight video definitely go check that one out i mean yes i have done it in videos but it's it's all for entertainment i really don't give two shits yeah no so, especially like during rallies it gets so fucking tiring you can't <laughs> you can't dude or you just going, like ride with your, your or going <laughs> to a rally or leaving a rally there's yeah. thousands of bikes everywhere and you just you just can't yeah yeah so or, from, you, or even hitting the sisters the twisted sisters there's so yeah. many bikes out there all day long you're constantly throwing arm out throwing arm out now if i tell my wife now i was like that's your job that's your job that's exactly what i told <laughs> mine <laughs> and then she'll be like oh i didn't wave at that one i'll be like well you messed up now now they're gonna come kill us like. <laughs> so for me on this one who actually cares my attention's not always on the uh the other side of a street and i don't feel required to wave at those riders Nope. I do when I think about it, but I feel that biker wave is more of an old school thing. Yeah. And for me, like today, I was riding to lunch and I was next to this old guy on a soft tail. He had his old lady on the back. And I say old lady because she was fucking old. And <laughs> they're just riding down 281 and I passed by him. I threw a wave to him. And I continued on my way and then got hit, you know, traffic. He comes up, he throws a wave to me, and that was it. Cool. But some guy on the other side of fucking 1604, I don't care. Oh, a divided highway? Yeah. Divided highway, nope. That's a barrier for me. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I treat that like a there's school like a bus. Wall. <laughs> there's like a wall there, sorry. You're like, zoop, you're not there. Yeah. I mean, you don't exist. Yeah. I mean, and, you're, and, you know, and, and depending on where you're at, you know, you could have 10 lanes of traffic. Hey guys, yeah. Pay attention to me. <laughs> no, fuck that. Yeah. Fuck your feelings. You know, it. People get all pissy about this shit, and you don't buy a motorcycle because you you now have a a new thing to go wave at people for. You buy uh. a motorcycle to fucking ride it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's like people who jeep. The fucking Jeepers and their fucking wave. Oh, I know. I had a Jeep. You, you know they buy the Jeep to get into the community, though. Oh, absolutely. I like my daughter. She drives a Jeep Wrangler. Oh, God. And she's like, I don't fucking wave. <laughs> <laughs> well, people on, in Jeeps, uh, I think for, uh, oh, hey, Mark. I oh, yeah. He has it. Oh, he's, got his, the, he's got the hand sticker, on his mirror. Yeah, yeah. This, the peace sign. So <laughs> they didn't have to do it anymore. Maybe that's what we need to do. We need to come up with something. Put for, it on our For our motorcycles. <laughs> exactly. Put a sticker on there that says Biker Wave. Yeah, right. Biker Wave. <laughs> if only we knew someone that could make stickers. I'll just, just a little one. It just says Biker Wave. Yep. That's <laughs> not, it. not a hand or nothing, just Biker Wave. Biker Wave and a period. It's got to have the period. <laughs> <laughs> you can find those on uh, JDC decals. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Uncle Ken, you need to make that and post that shit on the Instagrams. Yeah. Link in the description. Biker Wave, period. <laughs> <laughs> okay, rule number five halfway mark. Be respectful. Not everyone can afford a custom sportster, and not everyone wants a Kawasaki Ninja. The fact remains, whether you're on a Goldwing or a Yamaha V-Star 250, you're on a bike, and so is your fellow rider. Respect that. Also, never ask if you can ride someone else's bike. <laughs> I, dis okay. I, dis I disagree with that last part because I love when people ask if they can ride my bike because then I ask them okay you can ride my bike but then you gotta let me fuck your wife yeah my dad taught me that one surprise yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess it really depends on the I wife mean, I've seen that bumper sticker oh yeah <laughs> don't ask to ride my bike and I won't ask to fuck your wife I've seen that bumper sticker yeah. at motorcycle rallies yep it's probably a patch. It probably Guaranteed is. it's a patch. Yep. Someone go search the patch Amazon table. Amazon link in description. Yeah. <laughs> so, someone go search the patch table and send us a picture of that. <laughs> oh, man. I, I'm, I have to really agree with this one of, as far as, like, the overall point of it. Because, I mean, jabbing between friends is, is one thing. But when you're just a straight-up cunt just because of what manufacturer that bike rolled out of, like, really? Like, yeah. to me, that's as dumb as racism. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. No, I mean, I agree. I mean, look, you're you're out there riding. I don't, I mean, if, I don't you're, two if you're riding you're a Vespa, on. if you're riding a Vespa and we stop together, I'm going to ask if I can ride your fucking Vespa. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen. All right. <laughs> you know, and, and if, if this just like your little fuck around bike, I, I mean, I, I might not let you ride my fucking 900 pound 
you know, Full road glide. Out pack yeah. Man. You know, there's there's a difference there. You know, it's a trust issue. But, I mean, we knew each other for... Technically? S- technically, like... 16 hours. <laughs> yeah, and we swapped bikes. Yeah, because you wanted to try out my seat, but and I we, wanted to try out your handlebars. But we both had <laughs> large bikes. Large bikes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. was on the Road King, you are on the Road Glide. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that, 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 that makes sense right there. Yeah. But... But you do know that there's an unwritten rule about guys of our size, like all three of us. We're automatically friends because we're usually the biggest motherfuckers in the room. Oh, yeah. And if, if we're all oh, friends, then we don't have to worry about fighting with each other. That's right. And I can still be the smallest motherfucker in the room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we're not counting Brad? He's not in the room. In the room. Okay. <laughs> or Hasso. Or Every Hasso. time they're in the room, why do you think I rag on them so much? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm, look I'm no my daughter even freaking throws punches at Brad. <laughs> Your daughter's savage when Brad comes around. That's why he doesn't come around there. It's much. almost like you slipped her a 20 and be like, see how many you can get. <laughs> um, uh, if you, if I paid her, oh my God, oh, I don't know what she'd say. Fuck. Beers for tears. <laughs> Beers for tears. Got to make sure Brad's on arms so he doesn't kill himself. <laughs> right. right. So for me on this one, first off, a custom sportster. <laughs> That's where the bar is set. <laughs> Oh wait! You not didn't everyone write that? can afford seven thousand dollars. <laughs> I I did not write. This is all literally copy and pasted from this insurance website. Oh, I, I thought, was on the same page. I thought he wrote these. I thought you just like <laughs> took the be respectful and then like added. You know, oh, yeah. Fuck no. Me too. Why do, you think okay. why do you think I'm reading it the way I am? So just so you can make it through without stumbling. Uh, all right. <laughs> Actually, that's. Thank you Accurate. for outing me on that okay. one. Uh, but I actually tend to agree with this rule. I am cool with anyone on two wheels and those on trikes. Now, since I don't consider the slingshot a bike, well, it's not. I am good because I will talk all kinds of shit about slingshot drivers. What, what did you say you were going to get one, though? <laughs> yeah, first of all, you said but you were going to get one. No, 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 no. But I don't consider them bikes. They're cars with three wheels. What, okay. what did that Oklahoma license plate say? What did it say? Motorcycle car or... Oh, God. Ah, uh, uh, shit. What did it say? Motorized vehicle or... Oh, God, I can't remember. But it was so great. <laughs> Damn it. I can't remember. I, I swore it said something like motorcycle car or... It was something weird like that. But it described it perfectly. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> but to your point, can If someone is on a similar bike... Like, for you guys... You know, we had met one time. We had ridden together one time. This was the second time, like nine months later. Yeah. And we're out riding the Twisted Sisters. Yeah. And I had already witnessed your riding skill level just getting out to Lakey. So I was like, I'm cool with him riding my bike. Brad wants to ride my bike? Go for it. Hasso? Go for it. Justin? Go for it. Joe Blow, fuck you. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. My bikes are not cheap. No. You know, they're not I custom mean, got- sportsters, but. <laughs> custom sportster. <laughs> but, uh, but no. That's look, funny. People need an opportunity to see if they're going to like something. Oh, yeah. And if you're friends, you already know their riding capability. If it's someone who just went to, you know, the Rider's Edge course and, hey, can you, you mind if I try out your bike? Fuck you. No. no, go test ride a bike somewhere else. Yeah. Go go to a dealership and test ride one of theirs and drop theirs. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's Agreed. Fu- yeah. It's funny. I actually dropped a, uh, it was a Heritage. Uh, the first time I rode a Harley, it was a Heritage. I was test riding in the desert in Bahrain. And a sandstorm <laughs> came in behind me and pushed me off the road Damn. into thick, deep sand. And I tried everything to ride it out. And I even just stopped, tried to put my feet down and just kind of walkie it out. Yeah, nope. Tip that bitch over. Yep. Now, luckily, three weeks later is when my accident happened. And I was able to go and buy a Harley from him. So I didn't feel so bad with that. <laughs> that, that gas tank had a massive fucking ding in it. I think I found the only... Falling over rock. in sand? I found the only rock <laughs> in that desert. <laughs> and it had to land in the center of the gas tank where the uh, Harley symbol oh, had been painted God. on. 
I was like, oh. Can't hide that. I feel terrible. See, when you were saying I was like, oh, at least it's sand. I mean, sand, yeah. yeah. It'll buff out. <laughs> nope. Damn. Yeah, I mean, it, it cost them carry the seven about a thousand dollars to fix uh, when you convert it into american dollars well it's right. not real money anyways so, <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, okay number six and again i did not write these this is for us to that makes a whole lot more sense now yeah, <laughs> that, that sets us up to comment <laughs> pass courteously when you're cruising on the open highway and you approach another Harley Davidson rider, you have to ride with them for a few hundred feet before going past them. This isn't a law or anything. It is proper etiquette to show other riders your respect. Now, although this is the a written with Harleys in mind, the same could be said for any time you approach another biker. Uncle Ken, I'm going to start with you. <laughs> I should probably turn down my headphones. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> so, I've never fucking heard this rule. Nope. I, I actually have. Ever. I've never heard this. The only thing that I've ever heard kind of in relationship is if you're coming up on an MC. Yep. That's all I've heard. If you're oh. coming up on an MC, you know... And all the MCs that I've ran into, they don't give a shit. No. But I've always heard, don't just go fucking flying past them like they're standing still. Well, if they were moving fast enough, it wouldn't be like that. Well, this is true. But even if they're in a group, you know, who knows? But yeah, that's the only time I've ever heard not the whole just just pass them. Mm -hmm. I don't give a shit who you are. In the real world, uh, if you're not going as fast as I am and I'm coming up on you, you need to get the fuck out of my way so I can pass you. Get out of the goddamn left lane. It's not your fucking lane. Move over so that I can fucking pass you. Yeah, I've, I've never fucking heard that before. JB? Uh, I literally the same thing. I When I've heard it to MCs, I've heard it referred to as like the 1% clubs, uh, but usually they're going like 97 miles an hour anyway, so I've, yeah, we've only had to pass them once, and they were exiting on the way to, yeah. to Lone Star, but uh, no, that's, that's, that's fucking stupid. Like, if I see someone on the highway and we're going the same speed, I'll usually ride behind them just because it's safer when you have another person there but i've never done it as a courteous etiquette move no no. never and you you kind of touched on what i'm about to say for one this is the stupidest shit ever (laughs) ride along with a group or another rider yeah fuck that unless we are both lone riders on a highway going the same speed in this situation i am not against it you know just not even riding right up with them but keeping like 10 bikes between y'all yeah and again it's to your point it's more of a safety thing two bikes equals more visible surface area yep but, more lights yep but more when surface it comes area. to passing fuck no i'm no. gonna go around and, and i've heard it about the mcs i don't pay any fucking attention about it i mean i've never really had to encounter that i mean no. so but with the mc thing it's a protocol when another club is passing yeah that's see. what and that's where i heard it mm-hmm. around the club thing it was when i was in the clubs that's what the rule was and it really only meant in texas if you're passing banditos or any red and gold slow down and they will acknowledge you and let you pass but I don't wear a cut. Yeah, I don't either. So, no. so I'm not in a club unless, you know, are we the between two wheels? Fucking everyone thinks we're in a club. <laughs> I mean. Like, like, in the last, I don't know, six months, more people have asked me if I was in a club than any other time before. Hmm. Well, you do kind of look like the stereotypical biker. Whoa, 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 whoa. That sounded... That sounded harsh. That sounded a little hateful. We just broke down these stereotypes. I'm just saying. <laughs> Anyways. So, yeah. I, this one, I'm going to say, yes, be courteous. but Which makes sense. I mean. Yeah. Look, with the whole don't pass in the same lane, I get that. But if they're in the middle lane of a three-lane highway, fuck you. That's what I'll the left lane is I can pass on either side. You know, looking back at it now. 
if if I'm riding along and I'm coming up on someone and I'm passing them and we're going the same direction, I usually wave at them. Yeah, I usually do too. I'm more I'm more apt to wave that way just as we go by, just hey. Yep. You know. Yeah. And I've done that and had them fall in behind me. Hey, I mean, if you want to follow me, that's fine. Yeah. You know. I mean, I make a great rabbit for other people on the road. Yep. Because I am flying and somehow I don't get pulled over very often. Oh. <laughs> so I picked up my bike yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. And I was leaving Cowboys 35 to 410. I was on 410 and I'm cruising. And I looked down and didn't even realize it, but I was already doing 90 <laughs> on 14. I'm like, why are these all these cars going so slow? You know, and, <laughs> I mean, traffic, it was open traffic, it was flowing traffic. But I'm like, I looked down, I was like, fuck, I'm doing 90 already. So I back it off a little and I'm still cruising like 80. And I, there was a an SAPD cop parked on the side, parked in the median. Ooh. Oh, God. And I just kept going. <laughs> It's like, hey, if he's going to get me, he's going to get yep. me. And I just kept going. It's hard not to speed on 410, though. Like, I always speed on 410. Well, and see, the thing is, is, I was doing 90, but there were still people passing me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was like, I mean, I was going faster than the rest of traffic, but there were still people passing me. Yep. 90 is usually where I, I tend to, to stay around as well. And it did. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't an uncomfortable speed. It's not like I was whipping past people. Yeah. No. Well, so one thing, you know, Ken and I were talking about this earlier. The 117 motor does not like 70 miles an hour. It really loves 90. Yeah. Uh, last night, I was coming back from the tattoo parlor. I was hanging out with Bradley. And I was going through these little side streets. And I'm probably doing 75 in a 30. Yep. And... I come around this bend and up in this church parking lot is a uh, uh, SAPD SUV. And I'm, I didn't even hit the brakes. I was like, fuck it. I mean, at that it, point, you're caught. Yeah. I, there's there's no way I'm getting out of it. And I think Brad was, a, you know, 100 yards behind me or so. Oh, was he falling in your, his truck? Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> oh, damn. it was bad. I, I I was like, oh, here we go. Time for a ticket. And I was like, shit. Because, you know, I have my, my man bag that I have my wallet and my gun in. And it's in my tour pack. I was like, fuck, if I get pulled over, I have to explain to him that I have my concealed. I have a gun. You have to explain that you're carrying a purse. Yeah. <laughs> it's a backpack. Not This isn't the nut sack. I haven't. Uh, oh, okay. oh, this is the, the, back, the actual backpack. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's my 5'11 backpack thing. Backpack. Backpack. Okay. So, I think we've killed that one. But, uh, but yeah. Number seven. Don't assume. I love these titles of these etiquette. Don't assume it's okay to join another rider or group of riders on the road. Now, doesn't this one kind of contradict the last one? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, yeah. It says another writer or group of writers. Yeah, it 100% yeah. does. So I didn't the, catch that when I was reading through the notes. Yeah, there. so the last one just said, hey, ride with them for, you know, a couple hundred yards or so and then wow. pass them. <laughs> See, this is why you don't let insurance companies write shit about motorcycles. Right. They're, they're covering their ass on every, on every front here. They're like, we told you. We're not covering that incident. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So... Don't assume, Justin. Uh, I'm always kind of cautious of this one um, just because, I mean, like we've said, some people are a little bit more, uh, I don't know, protective of their their area, their group. They don't like people riding with them. I mean, you saw my, uh, I mean, you saw my, my group riding video, how many people were like, that's why I only ride alone with oh, those yeah. kind of people. Which, you mean every group ride video you've posted? Yeah, ninety uh, percent of them. Yeah. Or, yeah, or just the ones where there's accidents. <laughs> About ninety percent of them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> kind of, kind of all the same yeah. thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Group ride, biking bird. Yep, accident. Yep. 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 You got like a four out of five chance. <laughs> uh, for my groups, uh, as long as you're not riding like an idiot, putting yourself and other people in danger, I don't give a shit. Come on in. Yeah. But if you're gonna ride like an idiot, I'm gonna call you out for it. I'm gonna give you one warning. And if you do it again. I'm going to tell the larger gentleman in the room here to oh, take I'm care a, of it. I'm going to embarrass the fuck out of you, first of all. There's no warnings. <laughs> I'm going to call you out on your shit. 
because that's what I do. Like, you don't sugarcoat shit. No. not Because it's when, still shit. When safety's involved, no. No. You, you, you have to make a very public spectacle of it. Because, well, think well, about it. And, and a lot that's of... That's going to stick in their brain. Exactly. They're maybe, gonna, true. maybe not what they did, but the side effect well, yeah, and of well, what they did. You know, and our group, we don't ride like that. We don't fucking go... F- flying past each other and in each other's lanes and we're not doing wheelies and whatnot and you unless know. it's pre-planned or we all have comms exactly. and we're talking to each other like when justin would you know when you were on the triple oh and yeah. he'd be like oh i'm gonna do a pass you know make sure you know we wanted that was for video yeah yeah, yeah. you know so we knew that was happening but that or, like that one guy on the repsol bike yep that's exactly you know, what i have in my mind <laughs> he fucking blew past us at doing a freaking 100 miles an hour and we're just out cruising Mm -hmm. like no one fucking knew he was going to do it nope no and and that's what's tough too because look you when you're in a group environment whoever's leading the group and whoever the road captains are they are ultimately responsible for the group not the riders yeah they're responsible for the group everyone inside the group is responsible for themselves but you can't control what other assholes are going to do yeah. And a lot of people just don't pay attention to that. Yeah. I mean, I've ran up on on guys who, like, not clubs, but I've ran up on guys, three, four, five guys that were out riding, and I, I don't I don't join them. Yeah. I mean, unless I'm trying to pass them, you know, I'll join them long enough so that I can pass them. Yeah, we did that a couple times going to Lone Star. Yeah. We'd come up on a group that was going, like, 40. In the goddamn left lane. <laughs> Get out of the fucking left lane, people. Well, it's like Trace and I, when we were riding the pig trail, when we were up in Arkansas, you know, we're (laughs) we're riding along and it's just her and I, we're enjoying a nice, very calm ride. We get stuck behind two super fucking slow riders, but then this big fucking club comes up behind us and they're riding Tracy's ass. And Are we still talking about riding motorcycles? Yes, yes. Oh, damn it. Yeah, not that. No, fuckers. <laughs> but I started getting pissed because she's like, well, what are, am I going to just tap my brakes on them? I was like, ride your ride. Yeah. I was like, we have insurance. You already know what it feels like to crash. And yeah. this will be their fault, not yours. Well, and, so. they, and they know. Like, they know that, you know, it, it's it's one of those hot spot motorcycle yeah. areas so they know that you're going to come across people who are just out there tooling around yeah but then what what kills me is they were all hot dogging trying to show off but then once those two slow ass riders got out of our way tracy and i left that fucking club in the dust and we end up at the highway at the gas station and they finally show up they're like holy shit y'all can ride the pig trail's not fucking super technical no it's really not so anyways yeah riding in groups or i'm sorry the assumption with trying to join up and not join up look ride your ride yeah and pay attention to the people around you but don't worry about them yeah and and i don't like i said i don't join other groups that are already on the road yeah so speaking of groups number eight Riding in groups, each riding club or motorcycle club has its own personality, but there are some universal guidelines for riding in groups. Maintain your position in the group, although you can and should wave faster riders ahead. It's okay to fall behind as you can always catch up when the group stops for a break. Remember, it's not a race. Riding ahead, however, is rude. Uncle Ken. You know, I can, I can get behind that. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, maintain your position. Know where you should be riding. Yeah. You know, if you're going to ride, if you're one of those groups that we're going to ride side by side, first of all, you know, that's your own prerogative. But, you know, maintain your staggered. Who's the lead? You know, maintain your position. Obviously, the whole lane is yours as it should be. But maintain your position. Try not to fucking weave in and out of your 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 own lane. Mm-hmm. It's well, it's distracting. Yeah, yeah. It's distracting for the other riders, and you don't know is he weaving out because of his of track something. because there's a hazard coming up, or is he just fucking around? Right. 
So that becomes the distracting part of it. Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you're going to be, like like Justin said, if you're one of the slower riders, just go ahead and try and get in the back. You know, we're all pretty much going to the same spot. Most likely you've talked about where you're going. All these fucking people calling me today. So, I mean, it's here's the thing. And when I give a safety brief or when Justin's giving a safety brief, we tell everyone, do not try to keep up with the top riders in our group. Yeah. Yep. We have road captains. We will not leave you. Yep. We will not turn off of a major street if we don't have everyone with us. Yeah. Yep. And we we're, have, we're not going to leave you. You know, we have Hosso, who is known for not riding balls to the wall. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. He's no. a great rider. Yeah. And we've all got GPS. His comfort zone is where he rides in. Yeah. And I will never fault someone for that. Nope. And we don't turn off of a major street unless one of the road captains are there or we all just wait. And that's what we do. And that I think every group ride, no matter who's putting it on, should have that rule. Yeah. I mean, that if you think about it, that's kind of the root of everything. That's, that's the root of people riding outside their limits. That's the root of people passing when they shouldn't be passing because they don't want to get left behind if they're stuck behind a solar rider. That literally could be the, the number one rule, the golden rule. Yeah. I, I think number one golden rule for group riding. Yeah. No rider will be left behind. Yeah. You know, we had the rule in the military, no man left behind. Yeah. You're, you're going to, you're going to be there. You're going to, you're going to get there just like everyone else. Yep. Yeah. Live or dead, your body's going to make it home. You know? Yep. So. And riding ahead is rude. I mean, if you're riding ahead of the group, then you're not part of the group. group. Yeah. Yeah. So then (laughs) if you're going to ride ahead and do, then you're riding, you're on your own. I've seen that more an issue with sport bike groups. Not, you know, throwing shade. I mean, I've ridden with sport bike groups and things like that, but from riding in Harley groups, riding in sport bike groups, I've seen it happen a lot more in yeah. the sport bike groups just because those bikes are fucking fast. Well, yeah. that They also do not like going 70. <laughs> yeah. No, but they also don't like going 90. They like to be in that 110 exactly. to 120 range. Yeah. So, I mean, I see that, but I would say my, my second And you're not going to get lost on 410. <laughs> It's a loop. <laughs> Just hang in there. You'll get right back to where you're going. That was an absolute jab to all those San Antonio sport bike riders. Uh, okay. I would say go, the go. second, my second biggest rule is to uh, never pass your leader. <coughs> Donnie. Yeah. Sorry, I had to get that one in. I don't usually. Which would be part of the don't ride ahead. That's true, yeah. yeah. Root rule, man. Yeah. Golden rule right there. So for this one. Like kind of what I was saying earlier, the road captain set the rules for the ride. If you don't like the rules, don't ride with that group. Yeah. If you don't, here's the thing. If you don't like rules, don't ride in a group or ride in a group of people who hate rules. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, uh, exactly. That's like the same reason I don't ride with, you know, the Cowboys hog group. Or any hog group, really. Or really any hog group. You know, I, I, I don't like the way they ride and generally their rides suck. I mean, yeah. it, well, it is what it is. Yeah, but that's that's not that's it's a not different indicative. generation, really. Well, that's not indicative of all hog chapters either. So, like the hog chapter, Trace and I belonged to up in Dallas. We had amazing rides. It sounds like you had a good hog chapter there, but we had a massive hog chapter that was extremely active. So, like a Friday night dinner ride, which happened every week. We averaged 100 people. That's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> and think about it. You saw the parking lot of that dealership. Yeah. 100 bikes was not uncommon. And That's then crazy. We had big rides four times a year that we would triple that number. So, look, hog rides, all these other things, they have to, and, and let's face it, any group ride. You have to plan your ride around the weakest link. You do. Well, yeah, but I mean... Especially if you're leading it. Oh, yeah. And and that just gets exponentially harder with the more people you have. Yeah. Yep. And if there's a big YouTuber in the group 
and they know that there's a camera running on that person's helmet. Oh yeah. They're going to do a bunch of stupid shit, especially if they think, Oh, I'm going to be YouTube famous. I mean, <coughs> Donnie, you can be so. YouTube famous, like freaking <laughs> yammy noob and head on a Porsche. Facts. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, I think we've uh, beaten that dead horse a lot. <laughs> um, so yeah, don't ride like Donnie. Number nine, ride in formation. Along with keeping your place within the group, you also need to maintain your spot within your lane. A staggered formation gives you better visibility. It also gives you more space and opportunity to react to road hazards or accidents. Justin. Oh, this is one of my biggest pet peeves. Yeah. When the people rule don't people breaking this rule. People breaking this rule. It's <laughs> so freaking simple. So basic. It's so easy. So you basic. don't need to know math. You don't need to know science. All you need to know is like that guy's there. I'm here. Yeah. That it's so easy. And I've seen so many people will break this rule. Yeah. Yep. I don't get it. It. Yeah. I mean, I'm the same. Yeah. It's. It's so. Simple. I think part of me is like it's it's a little OCD thing. Like I really don't care that it's you know because I mean really if you've got one person here one person here and they have the same gap on the left and the right, it's really not any more dangerous than if there was a guy in the, the number two spot. But it's like when I have one, two, three, four, five, and then seven, I don't have number six. It just, it feels weird. Well, <laughs> and to but, that point, well, and though, it's a visual thing too. Exactly. When, because if, if you're you a had, road if, captain. If you have one and two, three and four riding correctly, and then you have five and then seven, and then someone picks it back up with eight and nine, you know. Yeah. There's now a gap there to where a car feels like they could squeeze in. That's true. Okay. I was thinking uh, single lane, but yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense when you when you throw in multiple lanes. Well, so from a road captain perspective, you know, if you're leading the, the group, if you can't see the headlights of everyone in your group or everyone in your pod, then you don't have control over your group. Unless you are purposely putting everyone into single file. Yeah. And then understanding the when oh and the why to put people in single file. And then people actually obeying or listening, paying attention to that shit. So, you know, for me, I think formation is one of the biggest safety protocols we have. Well, and it's there it's, for a reason, and it works. It does. There's millions upon millions of miles that have been ridden in formation for a reason. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, and for decades, it, yeah. it's been done that way. It works. It's there for a reason, and it works. Yeah. And know your hand signals. <laughs> oh, jeez. Honestly. And don't ride with my mom because she'll throw she's any gang, sort she's of... She's gang gangsta. Signs. Yeah, yeah, she'll she's throw all sorts signs. of gang signs at you, and you'll be confused as fuck. <laughs> God bless. We're making a left turn on 2nd Street to pop a bitch? Okay. <laughs> 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 all right, Mama Bird, let's go. Uh, I, too, love the Second Amendment. <laughs> <laughs> Number 10, our final one of this list. Don't ignore your skill level. This is perhaps the single most important piece of motorcycle etiquette. Whether you're on a solo ride, a quick trip to the store, or on a long distance ride with a group, don't ignore your comfort level with your bike. You don't have to be the first one off the line at a stoplight. You don't need to take that curve as fast as another rider, nor do you need to push your bike to top speeds on the highway. You know your skill level, trust that. After all, you're already on a bike. You've got nothing to prove. Oh, I've already got a bike. I got nothing to prove. <laughs> um, okay, Uncle Ken, let's start with you. Yeah, 100%. Ride your own fucking ride. And yeah. I, no matter how many times we've said this on group rides, someone always fucks up. Always. Always fucks up. And it may be just a simple, you know, nothing happens kind of fuck up. Or someone goes off the road and fucking throws their bike down. Yeah. And then like, lies to their dad about yeah, it. Yeah, and then lies to their dad about it and saying, you know, all sorts of weird shit. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I tell it to everybody that I talk to who, you know, is on our group rides or if I'm talking to them on Reddit or on Facebook, you know, and they're talking about group rides, yeah, I'll always ride your own ride. You don't have you don't have to keep up with everyone. 
It's just ride your own damn ride. You'll ha- you'll have a better experience. You'll you'll enjoy oh, yeah. everything much more if you're not worried about oh I got to catch up or y- y- they're doing this and they're doing that. Just ride your own ride. Yep, absolutely. I think I think this is probably the most broken rule out of all mm-hmm. ten. Yeah, I mean I agree. I, I think this this I think the the last sentence in that actually helps prove my point. The whole you you're on a bike, you've got nothing to prove. I think riding outside your skill level actually comes from that. Oh, I'm a I'm a biker. I'm a badass mentality. Mm. People that that still need a little bit of validation. So yeah. they don't have a bike, but they have a bike and ride fast. Yeah. I think that has mm. to... See, I think we should have done this episode, honestly, with Shade Tree. Oh, man. Oh, my God. It would have been oh. glorious. So, okay, that's <laughs> what we need to do. Shade Tree, I know you you listened to at least one or two of these. If you're listening to this... <laughs> he needs to do a video on this. We yeah. would. I would love... I will take time off, trailer to Florida. Roadblock, roadblock Florida. to Florida. I will roadblock to Florida... <laughs> And we need to do a writing video about this. Oh man, that would be a blast, especially with his his uh, on air persona. And he's got his he's got his new Harley too. And he, yeah, Ooh, it's meant to be. See, <laughs> it's a thing. We need to make this a thing. Okay, Shade Tree, please leave a comment in the uh, on the YouTube video for this. Shade Tree link in description. Link in the description. <laughs> yes. All right. So w- <laughs> when you are by yourself or with one or two buddies and your goal is to increase your skill level fine do that if you are in a group setting where you don't know all of the riders and i have an all caps on here all of the other riders then don't push your own limits you will put others live in danger and if you crash on your own i'm okay with that you yeah, are accepting you. the risk. I got a first aid kit. Yeah. I can give you a tourniquet. Or I can just put you out of your misery. Yeah, we can do that Second too. Amendment. Yeah. <laughs> but as soon as you take out another rider because of yeah. your inability to ride at the skill level you're, required, you're fucked. then you are a dick and yeah. deserve the lawsuit that follows. Or you join forces with that ass hat and start a fucking podcast. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, man. That's the best accent ever happened to you. That's all I got to say. Yeah. Actually, no. No. I got a lot more money out of Tracy's accident <laughs> when she hit me. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Did you sue her? I did. <laughs> you sued her insurance company? Well, this was... Okay, we, we'll, we'll sidebar on this. <laughs> oh, one, this is great. So, when we had our accident, we both... You know, we were married. Okay. And all the insurance was under mine. So we report the accident to the insurance company. They get the police report. They say, okay, Tracy was at fault. And they said this, and Texas is a no-fault state. Yep. So that yeah. made it even better. Uh, that validated this for me. But anyways, there's a cap on how much household members can sue each other in a personal injury uh, lawsuit. Okay. And the way this works is she was given a insurance adjuster from Dairyland. I was given an insurance adjuster from Dairyland. Had to be separate. And the way that they did it, they looked at both the damages. They looked at my hospital bill. They didn't care about hers because she was at fault. And they said, okay, here's what you get. And I think the cap is like $25,000. And they said, okay, we can pay you $8,000. I was like, yeah. So my medical bills were 50000 Like, oh. yeah, but that was before insurance. I was like, fuck you. You don't get to piggyback off of my health insurance. Yeah, I paid for that. Yeah. And so they were like, well, back and forth, back and forth. I was like, here's the thing. One, I have an attorney on retainer. So... If you want to fuck with me on this one, fine. I'll turn it over to them, and then we'll make a big deal out of this. Yeah. Or just pay me what is due. Pay me my my medical bills, and then pay for, for my bike to get fixed. Well, then about a week later, they came back. Well, in the state of Texas, we are only obligated to pay you $25,000. So that's all you're going to get. Okay. I was like, cool. Now, my total medical bills, 
I worked for Harley Davidson at the time. The cost for mine and Tracy's medical bills from our insurance was zero. Oh, shit. Because in our health insurance, if you're in a motorcycle oh. accident, <laughs> you have no out-of-pocket expense. Wow. Nice. So big thumbs up to Harley Davidson for nice. that. Now, I don't know if they Solid. still have that, but back when this happened, that was the case. Solid. Fuck the system, right? Well, yeah. I, I was Stick just, it to the man. <laughs> I was just happy as hell because Tracy's medical bills for that surgery and that hospital stay was just over two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, drop in the bucket. <laughs> so thank God for that. So yeah, here, here's the thing, and I know we harp. We've probably talked about this one single subject out of sixty episodes. I'd probably say 45. Yeah. Something about skill level has come up. And look, you have to mature as a rider. You yeah. have to grow your skills. Yeah. But there's a time and a place to do that. On dirt. Go get a dirt bike. <laughs> It'll make you so much of a better rider. <laughs> I mean, you have to push yourself, but like you said, there's a time and place for it. Yeah. yeah. If the three of us, or if the five of us in the OG crew goes out riding. Oh, it's a totally different ride. Oh, absolutely. Is, but we know each other's skill level. Yep. Yeah. And we know, and we will dog the shit out of each other when one of us fucks up. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But yep. look, we're out there trying to push ourselves. Now, sometimes we just cruise and that's all we're yeah. doing. Yep. But if we're going out to the twisties by ourselves and there's no cameras rolling, and we're, we're going to push ourselves. And none ourselves. of us are two up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're going to push the shit out of ourselves because we want to see what we can do. Yeah. But. And we're only pushing ourselves to our comfortable limits. Yeah. And look, your bike is a lot more capable than you are. Oh, oh for absolutely. Sure. <laughs> so let that, that little gut instinct tell you when your asshole puckers up real tight, that's when you have reached your max oh yeah yep. so okay closing argument what is the one accessory on your bike that no matter what bike you ride you will always have this on it now this is not gear this is an accessory hmm so that, does that have to be an addition to the bike or can it be something changed on the bike yes handlebars okay i hate every single fucking stock handlebar i've ever felt Fair enough. I'm just built weird. I'm tall. I'm all torso. Mm. It's always got to be handlebars. Short, squatty legs. Yep. Long ass torso. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. All right. And you have the uh, Clockworks clip hangers. Is that what they're called? Yeah, on Yes. On the bow donkey? Yeah. 14 inch. Fully yeah. adjustable, which is why I got them because they're fully adjustable because I'm so particular on my bars. Well, at the end of the day, you have to be comfortable. Yeah. yeah. When you've broken your wrist before, right? Both of them. Yes. Both of them, yeah. So Because that, of what? Dirt bike dirt riding? <laughs> <laughs> one was dirt bike, one was rollerblading, actually. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I broke my leg rollerblading. Nice. I've never broken anything rollerblading. <laughs> have you ever rollerbladed? I have, oh, okay. yes. Okay, just making sure. He, he wasn't going hard enough. He wasn't He wasn't about that inline life. Nope. No. What? <laughs> the aggro life. Aggro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Uncle Ken. Uh... For me, I have to say, like, I mean, would you count shocks? Yeah. 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 So aftermarket or upgraded Af shocks. Yeah. Upgraded suspension. Okay. So and, all worth the money. And I've got Legends front and rear now. And oh my God. It's like a cloud, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Dude, it's great. You can just reach back there, a couple clicks here, a couple clicks. Click. And, and oh, it just eats up the road. It's nice. just it's so amazing. Worth every penny. Yep. So. How about you? I know you guys all expect me to say fucking handlebars. No, it's going to get your cup holder. <laughs> well, that's going to be that those things that you attach to the fork so they tie down to the trailer easier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what we should get. Him. We should have got them for those for his God birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Why did we think of that? <laughs> Kuriakin makes those. I know. Ugly in chrome. I couldn't find them we in can black. Get, we, we know a guy that powder coat them. You drop them off. They'll be done the next day. <laughs> uh, for me, it's going to be windshield. Oh, and that's a good yeah. one. So... With the new bike, I have that stock limited windshield on there because 
we have something special coming up for our, our audience. We're going to do a shootout between the clockworks, the solar flare, whatever the fuck they call it, the touring version of their flare, and Memphis Shades. Oh, okay. So we're all gonna, on road glides too. All on road glides, all with very similar tall people riding height for oh, folks. We're all within two or three inches. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to do that shootout. So I'm I'm super excited. But right now, on my road glides, I've on the special, I had that little short chopped piece of shit windshield. <laughs> they put that on there just so they can make another 150 bucks to sell someone an actual windshield. But I yeah. have their touring windshield that comes factory with the limited and it's the right height, but it does nothing. I nope. still have buffeting. It's terrible. And last night it was cold. I don't have clear glasses. So I have my visor up and it's just all kinds of bad air hitting me. Yep. Dirty air all up in your all up in your face. Yeah. Yes. So for me, I'm gonna say a non standard whatever windshield. I need to have something that is engineered. Is yeah. In, yeah. <laughs> like actually wind tunnel tested. Yeah. Yeah. So we know Memphis Shades wind tunnel tests theirs. We know Clockworks wind tunnel tests theirs. They have performance claims with theirs, with the whole pushing down as you go faster. It's like 15 pounds of downforce at yeah. highway speeds or something like that. I believe so, it. Yeah. So that is coming up. Supplemental video on our YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed already, Between Two Wheels link is at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. Make sure you go over there, subscribe, and click that little bell notification. Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk. Then be someone better. Peace. I, I, I